Right then, so today we have a Sony TCKE300 with uh, reasonable condition, I would say. It's come to me with a couple of uh, issues. I'm not entirely sure what's up with it. So we're going to switch it on and see what we've got. So seems like it's all booting up. This one has a manual eject. And, uh, it kind of looks all right. It's not the cleanest inside, I'll be perfectly honest with you. The heads are boot minging. There is various amounts of crap and crud in there that needs taken out. So, um, I'm not entirely sure what it's going to do. So let's fire a tape in and see what it does. Alright, so it's kind of playing. Uh, I think the seller said it was chewing up tapes. Which can be... Bit of everything tips in fine. Can try it the way around. Hmm. Well, that's not good. For a start. Can try to rewind. Uh, fast forward. Okay. So we clearly have issues. Should we say tips a bit loose? Let's just pop the cover off and see if we can see what the tape's doing while it's in. Uh, press play. Uh, so it looks like a take up reel on the right isn't spinning. Well, that'd be why it's chewing tapes up then. So the, uh, the left reel will be going around, right reel won't, and that's what it causes tape inside your tape. And it just means all your tape's loose and eventually it'll pull it out. So let's get inside it. Standard four screws on the outside. Get these ones, all four of these off. And then one right in the middle on the back. These are all the same screws. And once the cover's off, pretty clean, actually. A lot cleaner than things we've had before. Uh, it's a pretty standard late 90s uh, Sony Transport. This one slides plugs into the board, which is unusual. So you'll be quite careful with that. But, uh, on initial inspection, you can see there the belt's off on the uh, on the take-up reel. Looks a bit shiny and gammy, if I'm honest. Uh, it's also not just off, it's very loose. I say this is right on the edge of being goo. Heads and the azimuth screw there is minging. Absolutely minging. They need a really good clean. Uh, head is, I'm not saying it's corroded, but it's just pretty disgusting. We'll clean that up. Recording head looks all right, I suppose. Not too bad. And the pinch roller is very shiny with a lot of rubbish on the uh, capstan there as well. So we'll have to change that, I think. Capstan is looking particularly minging. So to remove the transport then, we're going to take out these top two screws. I'd like to have a look at them first to see if they're damaged and it gives us a bit of an indication as to whether anybody's been in it but these look pretty good uh, once those top two are out then yeah you got one there one there and there's also some little black ones right down to the sides down here you can actually do this without taking the transport out but it's a lot easier if you take it out uh, all the ribbon cables then just pop off just give them a little wiggle they're not clipped in you can fully remove this one because it can only go one way so that's good. And then we're going to take this side ribbon cable out. Just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then you can move on to the larger one. Again, just a little wiggle. And this is the power supply and whatnot to your heads. That's out. Once they're out of the way, you've got your power cable. You just want to kind of pull that one. Pretty straightforward. All that's left now is one little earth cable, which we'll get off last. So you need to take the face plate off. So look underneath, and you've got four screws on the face plate. And then you've also got two screws holding the transport in, but we're going to leave them for now. We'll do them last. Once they're unscrewed, then these little clips on the side allow you to slide it off. 
if you put downwards pressure on the deck, the feet come off too, so it's quite difficult to separate the two. We'll just pop them off. And now we're in here, we can uh, have a bit of a closer look as to any gunk or muck or anything we've got in there. Um, that belt is definitely tossed. I predict that's probably the cause of our problems, if I'm honest with you. The drive belt doesn't look too bad on the capstan, but we're going to change it out anyway, because why wouldn't you if you're already in there? So I'll take your earth cable off. This just gives you a nice chassis earth. And uh, we'll get that out of there. Maybe I can kind of fit this screw back in there just for safekeeping. Mm, no. <laughs> right, so once all that's off, then you can completely remove the face plate. There's two ways of doing this. You can take the transport and the faceplate, or you can just take the faceplate off and then the transport last. I prefer the transport last because it means you can get the plugs out straight without breaking anything. And this faceplate will just wiggle over the open transport. Um, obviously, if it's shut, no chance. This is off. All right, faceplate's in pretty good nick. Not a lot to it, really. So now your transport sat there now. All that's holding that on is the two screws to the base. I'll take these out and fully remove it. Once they're out then it allows you to carefully wiggle those two connectors off the main board on the back of your transport and you are clear. Alright, so the drive belt itself looks okay. There's a bit of crud and muck on it. Um, but other than that, it's a fairly straightforward late nineties transport, I would say. Uh, one motor, sorry, two motors, one capstan. A bit of gunk in there. Uh, so this is kind of like a, a for, like a sandwich design, like an envelope design. Take these two screws out, and then the other half is, is just clipped in place. So, and get these two out of the way, and it'll just basically lift. Once you've uh, separated the two electronically, the blue plug on the other side comes out and you can just uh, lift them away. Really easy to pull out. All that's holding these two bits together now is your belts. So it's a bit springy, it's a little wiggly here and there. And then take this plug out, but do not pull it by the wires. These wires are very fragile. And then with a bit of luck and a bit of a twist, we are, if this will just come off here watching those gears on the on the back half. Let's get this, this belt is manky. That is right on the edge of being goo. And there we go. So that's that in half. Uh, so let's pull the, uh, the capstan out. There's a plastic washer on the other side, so you're kind of pulling against a little bit of uh, resistance. And there is our drive belt. As you can see, someone's been a bit crazy with the grease. So we'll clean that up. The rest of it looks pretty good. So on the back half then, this is the drive motor for your take-up reel. Again, we need to clean this off. And get some IPA on there and get all this black and gunk off there and make it as clean as possible. There is no springiness left in that belt at all. I think that's the uh, the source of our issues. So just gently watch out, watching out for these gears because once they're done, it's all done. There we go. As you can see there, if you just catch the light on it, there's like a certain gooey shininess to it. And yet, 9th of December, 98. So on the edge of the capstan there, you can see years of gunk and tape rubbish on it. This capstan seems to be kind of a, uh, a plastic composite of some kind, rather than metal. 
it hasn't got as much weight to it as the last one, but pinch roller then, so it's all done with this little clip there. Once you just pull that clip away from the uh, the arm, it just lifts off all in one go. There we go. And once it's out, it's self shiny, that is now. That is itching to be replaced. And these are just a separate uh, pinch roller and axle. So once you pull it and get it off, you need to retain the axle because your new ones don't come with them. Definitely lost its squidginess. This can cause, generally on Sony Dex tape screw. So just a good pull upwards. And that is off. So we need a belt and a pinch roller. Um, this website, I generally use it all the time. I don't know who it is. In fact, I do know the guy's called Slavo. He's really good. Uh, it's usually pretty quick from Slovakia. So it's about, what, a tenner? 13 quid, uh, something like that, delivered. So we'll get them ordered up and hopefully we can crack on with this pretty soon. All right, so it's been a couple of days now and we've got our nice new belts and a beautiful nice pinch roller there, which I'm quite happy with. Um, significantly less shiny than the one that's coming off. It's time to get all this gunk off first, so I've got a little bit of IPA there in a the jar and uh, some bog standard cotton buds. And we're gonna try and get the remnants of the belt or the belts and some of this excess grease that someone's been a bit overzealous with. Um, off before we go and attach our nice clean belt as you can see particularly minging so i'll fire this on a, on a stand for a bit a couple of people mentioned in the comments so you know get yourself a tripod and you kind of annoying everybody with your hand jerkiness so hopefully this uh, is exactly what you're after so basically this is just a case of just dipping this uh, this cotton bud here in ipa and Generally, it, everything will come off fine. Um, sometimes it's kind of caked on and it goes a little bit, um, like almost like vulcanized, like it, it goes rock hard. But this one's not bad. It, it's it's an awful job. But if you get a tape deck like this and it's and it's covered in the stuff, like it goes on your hands, it it just goes everywhere, and um, it basically is the the rubber belt wanting it to just to turn back to oil. So uh, the 70s stuff is generally the worst for this, I've found. But as this was right on the hairy edge of being knackered, it's not too bad, actually. So hopefully we can get all this off. And, and just as I'm going through this as well, there's, you know, there's bits of grease and bits of rubbish and stuff. So that's all main drive motor, all nice and clean. Um, there's just a couple of bits here and there, but... As you can see, it makes a massive difference, especially when you're coming to put your belt on. Um, it means you're going to get less wow and flutter and stuff, no slipping, or, you know, sometimes it takes a split second to start up to the right speed, and it can affect your speed for playback and things like that. So, if we get on this side, I um, don't really know where to start, actually, because there is kind of crap everywhere. But, um... I'll start off down here. This one is a little bit more ingrained on this side, which is, uh, this is actually the, the take-up reel one. So, it's quite it's quite fragile, this as well, so I don't really want to keep uh, much weight on it. I can't really put much pressure on it without potentially damaging it. And because it's a V-shape, the cotton bud kind of doesn't really get in there very well so I'll, uh, a lot of it's a case of just putting a bit of IPA on it like I did a minute ago I'll split that off actually and then maybe you can get into that uh, that groove a little bit better it's, uh, I'll move my hands and there we go it's rather than you just looking at my knuckle you can see what I'm doing but it doesn't take long really once you get it going and once you get it you know, the IPA kind of soaked into it. I just wondered if I could take that off, but it seems like it's all one. So again, I don't really want to break anything because with these things, um, sometimes you can get the parts off Sony. You know, you've got the parts uh, number in the catalogue. 
most of the time, I mean, once uh, a part like this is damaged, unless somebody else has already had the same issue and they've had the forethought and the ability to, to maybe 3D print it or something like that, then that's kind of your transport gone and done. And then you're looking for uh, a, a, another model for parts, which to me just wastes uh, another tape deck. So I try, you really got to try and be careful with these things. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward transport as well. I mean, two belts, one capstan. Uh, this is one of their better decks from the late nineties. I'd say it's you know it's kind of just one down from the uh, from the three head decks. Uh, Auto Cal and whatnot. It doesn't have Dolby S on it. You got B and C, which you know some people like Dolby S. Some people don't. Some people say that Dolby's only put on these decks to account for distortion given off by the transport which is um not as high a quality as you know if you pull a nakamichi out or you, you pull something like an akai of, of the same era yes they were more expensive but the transports were, were higher quality and a lot of them won't have dolby on them uh, at all a lot of them won't have dolby all the way up to s anyway um so i think some of them will have hx pro and whatnot on it but um, they, f they felt that the, the requirement just wasn't there um, to counteract any issues caused by the transport of the motors and things like that. So let's get just a little bit of this excess grease on. I think somebody's potentially done these belts already and then been a bit overzealous with the grease. The way I view grease is, is that if you can kind of see a lot of it, it's far too much. You don't really need that much at all, uh, but it's clean. It's it's not gummy. It's it looks like reasonable quality grease. So just a little, just a little clean up of of, of the excess, uh, leaving just enough grease inside the the working parts there to give you some lubrication and prevent wear. So I think that that will about do for that. If I'm perfectly honest with you, yeah, that's about do. So let's have a look at the capstan. As I say, this capstan's not metal, it's kind of a, uh, a composite plastic almost, almost like Bakelite, but um, obviously the, the drive belt's going to go straight over this, so we'll give this to once over. This is nowhere near as dirty as uh, the plastic, so it's interesting, perhaps a different kind of plastics that these three wheels are made of just react differently. You know, this is coming straight off the first one. Uh, for the drive belt came straight off, whereas the the take up reel belt seems to have left a lot more crud. Um, and again, like you know, the belts could be made up made up from two different kind of rubbers. The, the flat ones are generally a little bit more matte, as new, but there's still a fair amount of rubbish coming off that. All right, loads better. Let's try and get some of this off here. This is all gone. This is quite shiny as well. So I'll rough this up a bit and then give this a bit of a clean, I think. Um let's use a little bit of a little bit of wet and dry on it. Just to rough it up the not not too much to scratch your tape or damage your tape, you know. But definitely um increases the grip on the tape against your pinch roller. And uh, obviously we've got a new one, so we'll give this a bit of a sand. I've got this nice flat sanding block there. It looks rougher on camera than it is actually. It's uh, I think this is six hundred and just a really really light sanding over the top on a flat surface. And uh, once we've got that sheen off, this will really help drive your tapes and make things a lot more smooth. But what I do like to do once I've done this is uh, IPA again on that capstan, and any dust that comes off your sandpaper isn't transferred to any of your tapes. So we'll just give that a bit of a, a wipe down as well. And that's as clean as, as it possibly can be. And then we can stick this back in the transport now. Um, happy with that? Okay. So we'll fire this back in the transport. Make sure that you've got your plastic washers either side. And the other one is on the other side. And just put that through there. There's no need to grease it because there's grease inside already. And that plastic washer is just there. 
And sometimes these plastic washers can be a bit of a pain because they're, they're, they're made a little bit smaller than the diameter of the, uh, the capstan. So you've just got to somehow get your fingers in and, uh, and pop it over the top. And the friction will keep that capstan in place and, and obviously stop your belt from coming off as well. So if you lose these, then um, as you can see, it's just a little plastic washer if my uh, camera will focus. If you lose them, or you're putting this back together and you know you tip, your belt's slipping off, then that's exactly why. So once that's on, you just need about six fingers, press that down into place, right up against the bearing and nice and clean, that'll hold that into place now. All right, good stuff. So, um, what have we got left to clean? I'll give that, a, just to make sure there's no grease on that from pushing it through the bearings in the tube there. Uh, let's get that a little cheeky wipe down. And I think we're ready to think about fitting belts. Um, what have I forgot? Right, so here's our nice new pinch roller, the perfect size. These ones from this guy in Slovakia, Slavo, that's, uh, uh, they seem to be exactly right. And uh, the difference in the between the two layers, you can see on the camera. So you need to take this axle out of here, this just slides out, because you don't get a new axle with pinch rollers. And then that just goes inside. And then you can push that, uh, if I can remember where it is, here we go. And then just push that home into the holder. Just make sure it's square before you do it, and then push. Beautiful. I'll give that a little bit of a clean, uh, not with IPA, but just with a, a little bit of a, a dry cotton bud, uh, just to make sure there's no grease or anything on it. Uh, right then. This is where things start getting complicated now because it's more trying to work out the best way of doing this. I've not worked on one of these transports before, but generally they, they, you can put the belts in place and um, there's like uh, bits of plastic that stick up from the movement. The phone just gone off there. Uh, there's bits of plastic that will come up off the, uh, off the movement. It's not that one. And you can um, you can kind of sit it on the bits of plastic, and then once you've got the two halves together, you can just pop the belts over. But um, it's working out which bits of plastic. I'll try that one on that one for now. It's working out which bits of plastic to sit them on. So we'll try that one, and then we'll offer up the two parts and see if that's going to work or not. And then the same with the uh, the take up roller one as well. So we're going to do that one on this side because it's definitely got to go on here first because there's absolutely no way you're going to thread it through there. Um, I've got to get it underneath these these kind of captive arms. If we can't, I'm not really sure where's best to, to sit that one without offering it up and, and just seeing what the alignment's like between the two. See if somewhere I can, I can sit it which will allow me to uh, to just pop it in place. As you can see this, uh, I've just realized I haven't cleaned that. That was a bit of a stupid mistake. So <laughs> let's give that a bit of a clean note. And you have forgot something. So this is the motor side of the, uh, the take up reel belt, the smaller one of the two. And as, as before, there's plenty of excess grease and whatnot kicking about on it. So I'll try and get as much of this off as we can because it's going to prevent belt, belt slip. And to be honest with you, it's just good servicing. It's just a good routine to uh, to get all that stuff off. But it seems that the the previous belt that was on definitely on this one um, has 
started failing quicker than the drive belt did. And you see there's still plenty of crud coming off there. Um, so, right, I think that'll about do us. That's about as clean as Paul's going to get it. There's some couple little bits here which aren't going to affect, but it's just where the belts come off and get all them off. But that is clean as a whistle now. Right, so now what we need to do is put this belt on underneath all these cogs and arms and stuff. And logical thinking to me dictates that you got to do this one first before you marry the two halves up because there's no way you're going to thread that over while the two halves are together. So if I can just make it just sit where I need it to go whilst being as gentle as possible and not to break it. I'll stick it on this. Stick it on that leg for now. And see if we get anywhere with that. Just see if that's almost lined up when we offer the two halves together. Uh, so the take up belt seems to be okay. Yeah, but the casing's um it's kind of catching on on the drive belt. So that isn't I don't think the position where I want it. Uh, on this, uh, you know, this kind of temporary position before I pop it in place. It's it's seating, but uh, not. Yeah, I don't think that's going to successfully line up. You've got to put the. It's going to catch the belt there. And I don't think if I just grab a screwdriver. I don't think. I don't use a screwdriver. I'll use this because it's softer. I don't think I'm going to be able to pop that over. No. I'm not convinced that's it. Yeah, it's going to, uh, as you can see there, oh, there is actually some some better legs there. That's not lined up. So I think it's them three black legs. There we go. So them three black legs there obviously surround where the pulley goes on the other half. So that's good for that bit. That's where we want that bit. And on this one, it needs to be around these legs on the outside and it just means it keeps your belts in place and then when you fire these two halves together what you need to do is because it's like a like a sandwich design put these two clips home first uh, at an angle and then close it like a book just try and get that in focus so you can there we go so you can see it popping together and then with very <laughs> With very gentle wiggling, we should be able to pop that home. I think that's all those two clips are in. Excellent. That's it now. So we'll just secure that. And these two, uh, these are long brass screws that we took out earlier. Um, the absolute longest ones in the tub. And then once we've got all aligned, we can pop them belts onto the correct pulleys. I think this is a, it's actually a little bit tight. I think it's going into plastic, so after the first kind of 10 or 11 threads, it should ease off a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's a lot better now. Yeah. There's one. And the same again on this side. It's always comedy timing, isn't it? When you're doing something, your bloody phone starts ringing. Uh, yeah, so I get these two screwed in and sorted. And what we've got left to do now, that looks all good and tight. Now, if you look in there now, that belt is just sat over the top of the, uh, the mortar. It's just a case of just popping it on. I'm sorry if my hand was in the way there, but there's not a lot I could do. It's just a case of just knocking it down and then it'll sit over the pulley. And then you can rotate the capstan now. And because of the way that it's uh, it's shaped, it'll just find its way home. So that's the drive belt done. And we'll do the same again with the take-up wheel belt. I'll just spin this round here. So you can see this is sat on the plastic clips now. We'll just pop that down. There's one side, 
I don't want to do it too far because it'll go underneath and then it's a wall of pain. And then just really gently, that's it. On. Perfect. Both belts. So now it's just a case of putting it all back together. Let's uh, stick this blue plug back in the blue plug. It's very fragile, this. I don't like this one, but I'll just try and bother it as little as possible. Okay. And then what we've got left to do, pinch roller. <clears throat> so this can kind of only go in one way. There's a pin on it. Um, and the pin sits in a little little hole in the transport there. And then you just push it on. No, that's not right. Ah, there you go. Yeah, push, it, push the transport up a little bit. And that just sits in there. And then when the transport goes up and down, it's activated on a spring to keep your attention on your tape. All right. All right, right. Right then, so now then, now that's all done and back together, we need to just get all the transport and everything back in. So I'm going to open the transport. And uh, once it's open, you can feed the tape holder into the face plate. And then it's just a case of identifying the correct screws. Shut that to keep it in place. And it's got to identify the correct screws. I'll get something to lean that on, actually. There we go. Cheeky little tea towel, because I don't particularly want to scratch it after I've done all that work, even on wood. And it's just a case of um, refitting the, the four screws onto the face plate. So it's the two gold ones for the top and the two um, <coughs> black. They're kind of like self-tappers, actually, for the bottom two. I'll stick them two in. Just like that, as Paul Daniel says. All right, they're in nice and tight. And these are our two little tiny little black screws. If I can make sure I get the right holes, actually, thinking about it. No, that's the wrong screw. It's definitely these ones. And uh, actually, look at that. Is that the right hole? No. Right, I'm just going to double check my videos and just make sure that I've got the right screws here. Because there's kind of five or six screws that are all this, roughly the same size. And it's definitely not... No, that's just fell in there. <laughs> we've got that one out, right? So it's the black screws. And we've located the right holes for these here. They're a little bit higher than, than it actually naturally looks on the on the front, or face plate, on the front plate. These are soft tappers, and obviously there's a bit of plastic you don't want to... Uh, over tighten them and then we'll stick the bottom soft tappers in and hopefully we can just get this all together um, double check the azimuth double check the speed and I think we should be good just make sure it's doing what it should be doing compared to last time and just have a little nip up of all these now not, not too much because we're into plastic again as I say once you round them that's it it's a world of pain so, and then this goes over the top of the feet. I just gotta get that cable out of the way first. Give it a second. There you go. Somehow to sit that on the top. You need about six hands for some of these jobs. And then that sits on the feet. And then the face plate just clips in. Now at the same time, as soon as you're clipping in the sides, you're also pushing in the connectors of the board. Just spin it around so you can see. You're pushing the connectors of the board into the transport, so everything's got to be lined up straight. Otherwise, you're going to end up breaking something. I just want to double check that's actually lined up. And then once it clicks into place, that should. And there we go. All right, two connectors there. Just make sure them pins are all lined up before you go anywhere near it. And then uh, that's all in place for now, at least. So we can go about remaking the electrical connections and stuff before we fully screw it in. I'll we'll start off with the earth cable. This is like a, a brass self-tapper. It's the only one screw that looks like this. So it's pretty straightforward to remember which way around it is. So we'll fire that back in. 
and we can move on to our uh, ribbon connectors. Let's see if I can get a better view of this. There we go. And these just push in. They don't have any clips or anything retaining them. They're actually quite tight, but uh, just right to just push in with your thumbs. There's one. And then the one on this side as well. All right, and then this power cable, if I can find the plug on the board for it, is there. Yeah. <laughs> that one's in. And what we've got left now, we've got the one from the transport. So this is a, you know, it's pretty straightforward, this one. It can only go one way. Even if you get it reversed, it won't matter. So that just pushes in the top. And the same again onto the main board. So that white plug there. All right, I think that is us. What's left? Um, power cable. I'll spin that round as well. So don't forget that. Pretty straightforward two-prong cable there. You can just pop that straight back in. Once it's lined up, it should just click into place. Excellent. Okay, then before we fully screw that faceplate back on and we screw the uh, the two transport bolts in from underneath, let's have a bit of a test. Okay, so manual eject, don't forget. Pop the tape in, hopefully this. I was going to press the button there, same as the K611. And let's see what this does. All right. Success. So the take-up wheel was the issue here, uh, the belt and the take-up wheel, let's have a bit of a play about and test all the functions. That's fast rewinding as well, this is quite significantly faster than the ones I've had. The other ones I've had. Yeah, we've got great levels there, look. A lot better. No stupid noises, no clicking, nothing like that. So it wasn't anything deeper in the transport, it was just simply belts. Uh, let's try the auto cal for recording. Uh, if I can work out how to do it, it seems. Uh, mm. right, let's just pause. There we go. So the auto cal is for basically it sets its own bias, so it'll record a small track on the tape with a couple of high and low tones, and then it'll play it back to itself uh, with it only having one head. It's got to record, rewind, play itself, listen to itself, and then position the tape back where it was. Successful. All right. Excellent. Happy with that. So let's um, whip this out. I'll stick this cover back on just so we don't get any gunk or rubbish in the in the transport. It just clips down once we get sorted. And what else have we got to do? Let's just stick the case back on the top. Uh, actually, I'm thinking. I'm going to take that off because I want to do the tape speed and whatnot. So we've got it hooked up to our oscilloscope here in XY and we're going to do azimuth on it. So once it settles down a little bit, so that should be a straight line from about 7 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Um, so our azimuth screw on this, we have one azimuth screw, it's uh, simply there as per the service manual. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust that until that uh, azimuth is, uh, is a straight line, so we know that everything's in phase. Mm, it's just a case of minor adjustments here, left and right and right and left, and just see where we can get it. So it's, it's in phase as in phases as possible. That's a lot better. We've got a really high tone on here. This is 10,000 hertz, so this is very, very uh, fine adjustments. The higher the tone, the uh, the more fine your adjustments are. And once it settles down, it does affect it every time I touch the screwdriver on the head because the pressure of your screwdriver can, uh, can affect it. And it's still kind of flapping about a little bit there. Uh, I think that is about the best we're going to get it. All right, so the last thing to do is the bit that my cat absolutely hates, and that is uh, stick a test tone through the tape with a known good 
tape so this tape's been calibrated on an akamichi it's been tested on a quartz lock deck as well so i know this 3000 hertz is good so what i like to do is i have an old phone and i use an app called spectroid nothing to do with me i don't pay for it it's free i think and uh, it's pretty good so uh we've got a test tape in fire this in at 3000 hertz and on our spectroid app we have 3000 hertz let me just press play there we go dead on 3000 So in summary, I think that we can safely say that's another one saved. Um, I should have used a, a lint-free a lint free cloth just to do that. Nice clean up on the end there. Uh, Windoline works best I think with these things. Sometimes if you've got a lot of scratching on the screen or on the, uh, the sight glass there, you can restore, restore that with a little bit of um, poly watch which is a chemical used for restoring watch crystals it's like a really fine abrasive compound but in all honesty this keeps wanting to defocus itself uh another one saved happy days pretty straightforward uh it's been serviced and sorted i've had a bit of interest in this already so and what have we got next there's a bit of a a sneak preep for the next one i have yet another k611 three head deck to i've not even turned it on I received it the other day um and so like this is the there's another one in the box behind me and then there's also the one on the back there so we're gonna rip this one apart next and we'll see what happens with this one but uh thanks for watching if you enjoy my videos um maybe consider subscribing it really helps it makes me feel like i'm not doing this for nobody and thanks very much bye